You know, I'm just getting worn out talking about this stuff. It's such a knucklehead, just boneheaded move that drives me nuts. Why didn't they design it to fit underneath there? Where was the focus group when they needed it? Welcome back everybody. We got a good one for you today. Trying to solve the mysteries of the world when it comes to tractors. If you feel like you have an answer for everything, well, this is your time to shine. I don't have an answer for any of this stuff. These are things that I'm asked about, questions that I have rolling around in my head too. I just don't know the answer. So let me know if I'm the only one confused by this or if we're all in the same boat. Hey, as always, we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. If your tractor is feeling a little tippy, a little unstable side to side, wheel spacers can make a big difference. Boro Spacers are made in America and have a lifetime warranty. Check the link out down below. All right, first off, you know, there are slogans out there bashing other tractor owners, not because of the brand itself, if it's John Deere or Kubota, but because of the paint color. For some reason, tractors only come with one paint color. If you're Kubota, it's orange. If it's John Deere, it's green. If it's New Holland, it's blue. If it's Massey, it's red. It's such a strange thing. You know, if you're going to buy a car or a boat or a four-wheeler, you have your choice, right? Maybe not every color under the sun, but you're going to have a decent selection of different color combinations that you can get for your machine, that piece of equipment that you're buying. You can do the same thing as well for tractor attachments, you know, like brush hogs that I sell. I can get them in all sorts of colors. There's snow pushers, but the tractor itself you have one color that's it there's no choices take it or leave it so as a seller of tractor attachments I like to get something neutral whenever I can. If I can get a gray color or a black color that can kind of just work with whatever tractors out there, I'm gonna try to get that color scheme available. It is so difficult to carry green and orange and blue and red. The amount of inventory you have to stock for that is just incredible. And then it's all the guesswork of what kind of demand for each one out there. But I'll tell you the ones that are most picky about their paint color, I'll give you one guess at who it is. Yeah, John Deere owners need their green paint. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Have you seen in the back of a John Deere tractor, it's black. It's not green. So those three-point arms, everything on the frame down there is all black in color. So just get a black attachment, get a gray attachment, something else. It's going to be just fine. Hopefully it's covered in dirt or snow or mud or something else anyways, because you're using it and you can't see the paint anyways. That brings us to our next mystery, which is a bit of a conundrum for me. I don't understand the fact that tractors were designed to work the earth all sorts of terrain. However, they come with such a high center of gravity. So often the seat is up really high. They're very skinny, you know, very narrow, nice and long. And so if you're not on a perfectly level, flat, smooth piece of ground, you're gonna start feeling really wonky all over the place and feeling like you're gonna tip over. If you have a cab on top of that, raising that center of gravity, it just compounds the issue. Now it seems this has become more and more of a problem as we get to more modern era tractors. The older ones seem to be a little bit wider, have a lower center of gravity. And the same thing to compound this issue is that not only side to side, but also front to back. They're just getting lighter overall, those rear ends. Maybe they're using less material, cheaper material. Who knows, maybe they're actually getting more efficient so they don't need as much material and that's why they're lighter too. But that's why we talk about ballast weight a lot. So when you're lifting up something really heavy with the front end loader in your bucket or forks or a grapple, you have that weight on the backside to kind of counter it out, even it out so you don't tip over. So just be aware of that. I don't know why they are so tippy these days. So the question I'm often asked is why aren't tractors designed to be essentially self-balanced, right? So if you're using that front end loader, the tractor itself can already stabilize it. It's just not the case these days, but I don't know why. You know, so that's one of the reasons we do partner with the Bora Wheel Spacers to help out with that. We came out with our own Versa bracket. We offer a lot of different ballast solutions and we talk about it a lot. It's very important, don't overlook it. And one of the other things that I've seen on some other equipment, I even had it on a real mower that I had was a, a tilt gauge. Just a little simple rudimentary indicator that lets you know that kind of angle that you're on so you know if it's in a comfort range or not, or if you're in danger of potentially tipping the machine. I I don't see those at all on tractors anymore. I've heard of some guys adding those on, which could be a good idea. I know you can get them really cheap on Amazon, but it's something to think about. I hope you're enjoying today's video. If you'd like to see more of them, hit that subscribe button down below so you're notified. And I'm guessing if you're watching this, you own a tractor or will be soon. We sell tractor attachments. We ship them all over the country. Check out our website. Anything for the front end, for the back end, we can help with goodworkstractors.com. A common question that I'm asked are about things like brush cutters, 
hydraulic post hole diggers, other items that require a large hydraulic volume and mount on your front end loader. Now for the most part, these kinds of attachments are not well suited for tractors. There are a few products out there here and there that are gonna do a decent job, but oftentimes they're gonna either operate very slow like on a post hole digger, or they're gonna be very small. Now you might see something like, I think it's the brush tiger or tiger shark or something where you can mount it onto your front end loaders, but it's gonna be like a 30 or 40 inch cut and be like a little brush mulcher that's up there. However, it's not gonna be a big five or six foot machine. And the reason for that is that the hydraulic system on tractors is just very limited, a lot smaller than what it is on a skid steer or an excavator or more like construction equipment. And I think that's because hydraulic systems are very expensive. And so if you put a really big hydraulic system and a pump on there, it's gonna really drive up the cost of these smaller tractors. And two, the tractors have a rear PTO and a rear three point hitch. And so that PTO is a really well, relatively cheap way to get a lot of power out of the equipment. You got to put something on the back of your tractor instead of up front on the loader, which can be a downside because you're looking behind you potentially instead of out in front of you. However, I think that kind of ties in together, right? Everything about a tractor is meant to be a little bit more basic, simple, cheaper overall. And so the cheaper way to power your equipment with that rear PTO kind of ties into the overall theme. So that's just my theory anyways. I don't really know the full answer and the reasoning behind it. I will tell you, if you do want to run a regular full-size brush mulcher from your skid steer on the front end loader of your tractor, you can get something called a hydraulic power pack that will run off the rear PTO, hang on your three-point hitch. They're very pricey to get into, but they are gonna be what you need to supply the right GPMs, the right flow to operate that equipment. Now, this one's maybe more confusion than it is mystery, but oftentimes we think that our three-point Point hitch has down pressure to push an attachment into the ground. Now let's say you have a grading project, you want to have some extra scraping power, maybe you're trying to clear a driveway off. It could be a post hole digger where you want to have some more down pressure going into that hole. It could be a core plug aerator. A lot of different reasons you would think it would be very handy to have that extra pressure pushing down. As far as I know, there's not a single tractor out there that comes with down pressure as a standard feature. You will see a few offerings out there, and I know that WorkSaver sells one for the post hole diggers. You can get an add-on down pressure kit just for that post hole digger. And I've seen a video of the John Deere 4R tractors as well, where you can add on a down pressure kit. I have had a lot of 4R tractors come through my shop over the years and I have never seen this kit. So it is not a very popular option. I'd love to know more about it if you've had a chance to use it. So what that means is it's just gravity doing its thing. That is what is keeping your attachment on the ground. Maybe the angle of the blade or the pitch of it is going to control a little bit of that cutting depth and that aggressiveness as well. But you are not gonna have any force from your tractor pushing down onto the ground. It is just gonna be the attachment itself. And that is one of the reasons we are coming out with a product called the Hitch Hanger. So if you have a quick hitch, we are gonna supply a hang on bracket, one for the right and the left hand side where you can add additional suitcase waste to get that additional down pressure if you need to, on top of the fact that if you have a light attachment on the back, and say it's a landscape rake or a rear blade, or something small, maybe even a small box blade, and it's not enough ballast weight for you, it's a good way to keep that attachment on still usable, but then have another area to add on the additional weight for your counterweight. Now we've pitted John Deere and Kubota against one another quite a few times on this channel, and this is one of those mysteries that neither one of them have figured out along with the rest of the competition. And this is gonna be one of the main interfaces with how you control and operate your tractor, which is the hydrostatic pedal configuration, whether that's a side-by-side -side pedal or a forward reverse with a treadle pedal, neither one of them make a whole lot of sense and I can't figure out why. So if we first talk about John Deere's twin touch pedal system, you're gonna have one pedal for forward, one pedal for reverse, but with a twist. They are the opposite configuration as you're used to in your car. So if you think about it in your car, when you push down the right pedal, that's your accelerator, you're expecting to go forward for the most part, unless you physically shift it into reverse. However, if you push down on that right pedal with the John Deere system, you are going backwards. You need to push the left pedal, which would be the brake in your car, that's gonna be the go forward pedal on the John Deere. I know, I'm confusing you right now talking about it. That's how confusing of a system it can be, but Kubota system isn't a whole lot better. So on Kubota system, they call it the treadle pedal. There's a couple different variations of it, but the traditional one you think of is one big rocker pedal. So you push down on the front with your toes, you're gonna go forward, you push down with your heel on the back, and you go backwards. Now there's some folks out there that don't have any issue with that at all, with either the John Deere or the Kubota. I myself despise the traditional treadle pedal. I have no ability on a regular basis to consistently push down with my heel on the back of that pedal and go reverse. It's a very uncomfortable motion for me. I just can't get acclimated 
acclimated to it. If you can, more power to you, but neither one of these is a really good system. You would think that with all the engineering brain power they have, they would certainly figure out a better way, but they have yet to do it. All right, so this one I have never understood. I do not get it for the life of me. These engineers drive me nuts. Why do they design a tractor with a ROPS bar, the rollover protection system, especially on these subcompact tractors? They know they're selling them to homeowners that won't fit in their garage. Raise your hand if you've hit the top of your garage door. I have, I have hit every garage door I've ever pulled into with a ROPS bar that I didn't fold down ahead of time. It is so stupid, it's only like an inch and a half taller than it needs to be. They should have designed this thing to fit underneath those nominal garage doors. Now this just isn't the subcompacts, it's larger tractors as well. You know the John Deere 4M series up until a few years ago had a fixed ROPS bar. It wasn't foldable and it would not fit under a eight foot door. An eight foot door it wouldn't fit underneath. It was like two inches too tall. Why didn't they design it to fit underneath there? Where was the focus group when they needed it? Just send out a few of those to different homeowners, see what they have to say, get their feedback before you put this into mass production. It's such a knucklehead, just boneheaded move that drives me nuts. Now you're gonna run to the same situations on cab tractors as well, and it's not just John Deere, but it's Kubota and everybody else out there. I, I don't know, there may be some design parameter that requires it but it's just super annoying that we're we're that close guys we're like an inch inch and a half away on most cases and they just couldn't do it it drives me nuts you know i'm just getting worn out talking about this stuff you know why don't these guys put good storage solutions on there why don't they have good lighting solutions where's the tie down points like all the construction equipment has but these guys need to do better and that's why you see all these small manufacturers out there coming up with their own solutions to solve the oem's problems so there you have it some of the biggest mysteries in the tractor world do you hold the answer let us know and leave a comment down below. Did you know that we have over 450 videos out there for you to watch so there is something you're sure to enjoy? If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button right down below and follow along. And if you own a tractor and need a tractor attachment, we'd love to earn your business. Check us out at GoodWorks Tractors. We sell and ship all over the country. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.